The Bible records God speaking audibly to many to people many times. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, God replied to Moses. This was a bit audible voice. I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent you. In 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1, David anointed king of Judah. After this, David asked the Lord, Should I move back to one of the towns of Judah? Yes, the Lord replied audibly. And David asked, Which town should I go to? To Hebron, the Lord answered. In Acts chapter 8, verse 26, As for Philip, the angel of the Lord said unto him, Go south, go down south, the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. This was when he met with the Ethiopian eunuch. Next chapter 9, verse 4, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Soul, soul, why are you persecuting me? This was Jesus. I mean, yeah, this was Jesus talking to Saul, who became the greatest apostle of all. On his road, trying to persecute the believers of Christ. But there's no biblical reason why God could not speak to a person today. Audibly. With the hundreds of times the Bible records God speaking, we have to remember that they occur over the course of 4,000 years of human history. God speaking audibly is the exception, not the rule. Even in the biblically recorded instances of God speaking, it's not always clear whether it is an audible voice, an inner voice, or a mental impression. But still, God may sometimes speak audibly to people. It may not be as often as it is, but He does speak to us today. So when you hear his voice, it's not a beginning speaking. But you have to remember when somebody claims, even yourself, if you claim that God were to speak to you today, it needs to agree with the word of God. If it's somebody telling you, you gotta jump off, do this, or you gotta hurt this person, that's not God. That's the enemy trying to confuse you. Sometimes it's not as distinct as it may sound. Maybe it's just a prompting of, don't go there, go here. But you know, when you go to a particular place, it will hurt you. That's not Also, finally, the Holy Spirit speaks to us in a still, small voice. There's only one place in scripture where God said to speak in a still small voice, and it was Elijah after the dramatic victory over the prophets of Baal. So remember that. It says first Kings chapter 19, verse 12. And after the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there was a sound of a gentle whisper. The point of God speaking in a still small voice was to show Elijah. The work of God did not always be accompanied by dramatic revelation or manifestations. Divine silence does not necessarily mean divine inactivity. Sometimes we confuse God's silence as inactivity, as He doesn't listen to us, as He doesn't hear us. No, He's working in the back. He's working things for our own good. But isn't it wonderful? that we can also see, taste and see His goodness through signs, miracles, and wonders. That may not always be the case, but we can operate in that. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, Then He said to me, This is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel, It is not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. If you remember Jericho marching around the walls, I mean marching around the walls of Jericho, they were supposed to try to take it by heart, but God said no. Paired them down to just a half, a few hundred, and they walked around it, and they just followed God's prompting. When they sat on the sound of the trumpet, that's when the the walls fell. That's God speaking to them, guiding them. 
because God is God. He's not going to find a simple manner of communicating with his people. In scripture, he's said to communicate through a whirlwind in Job 38.1, to announce his presence by an earthquake in Exodus 19.18, and to speak in a voice that sounds like thunder, 1 Samuel chapter 2, and you see the rest there. In Psalms, his voice is compared to both thunder and whirlwind. Psalm 77-18, the earth thunder roared from the whirlwind, the lightning lit up the world, the earth trembled and shook. In Revelation, it said, we're told that lightning and thunder proceeded from the throne in heaven. That's his voice. From the throne came flashes of lightning and the rumble of thunder. In front of the throne were seven horses and burning flames. This is seven called spirit. Yes, you may hear him in, in a audible voice, but more often than not, it's a still, small voice. Using impressions, using visions, using dreams, using his word, guiding us. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, it says, Long ago, God spoke many times, in many ways to our ancestors, through the prophets. And now in his final days, when we are in the final days, he has spoken to us through his Son. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son, He created the universe. It keeps coming back to that. Going back to the Son of God. He will guide us through our lives. Jesus is the key to hearing the voice of God. Amen. And then through Him, we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He then guides us and counsels us. See, the difference between God speaking through the thunder and rolling and through the still small voice can be considered as showing the difference between the two dispensations of law and grace. The law is a voice of terrible words. It was given amidst a tempest of whirlwind, thunder, lightning, attended with an earthquake. Remember on, on the mount, mountain, Sinai. Hebrews chapter 12. But the gospel is a gentle voice of God through love, grace, mercy, and peace, pardon, and righteousness, and the free gift of salvation through Christ. The law breaks the rocky hearts of men in pieces. It shakes us, our consciences, and fills our minds with a sense of God's fiery wrath and punishment that we deserve. But then the gospel speaks gently to us. Peace, pardon, that's available in Christ. That's the difference. That's why before in the Old Testament you always see him. There's a big fiery uh, fire by night and then there's a cloud by day. There's these great manifestations of his power. Because the fear of God is being instilled in his people. They still had, even though they were walking with God, they still had Egypt in them. They still had their idols. And this is who, how we were. Before we, re before we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, there was the signs and wonders shows us that God is real. Elsewhere in the scripture it says that signs and wonders are not for believers, it is for non-believers. Yes, God uses us to dispensate, to operate in the signs, gifts, and wonders. But this actually, this show of power is for those who do not know the Lord yet. They can come to taste and see the Lord's goodness. Because it's just like, you know, at, at home I have this aquarium and I cannot tell them how much I love them. No matter how, what I say. Even if I yell, I'll feel the shake of the water and the glass. But gently, I just put the food in their aquarium, and that's how they're fed. And I make sure that the temperature is just right so they don't get cooked <laughs> while they're sleeping. Make sure that the water is clean so they don't have, uh, they don't die. That's how, what, that's how God operates in my life. You may not see it, 
but he is there. Just like those twins in the womb, you may not see God. You may be in darkness, but you can hear him. You can sense his presence all around you. You can feel him. God speaks to us in many different ways. We need to pay attention and establish a pattern of how he speaks to us most often. Monitor the track record with success in this, in these different ways. We're consistently on target with one of these. For example, it may be through dreams. Some of you may be dreamers here. Some of you might have visions. Some of you might have impressions. Some of you might have other things or a combination of things. That's God speaking into in you and through you. The Bible is the bottom line authority in all things. But there are some situations not covered in the Bible in specific ways. Like Job, Job's choices or ministry turning points, job choices and ministry turning points. We need to hear from the Lord for ourselves and for others. And I pray that God will open your spiritual ears to hear his voice. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's all stand. I know the Lord. I know the Lord has been speaking to us. He's been here all day long. He spoke to us last week in our service and speaking to you today. So as we stand up and as the Lord releases you, I mean, we'll all pray over the lunch, over the food already, and our ushers will guide you where that is. As the Lord releases you, you can go ahead and have your lunch break. Um, but I know the Lord is in your hearts right now. The Lord's presence is here. And all of this, Zuro, Sabi, You'll, maybe this just went through your head or others just resonated certain things resonated with you hold on to that hold on to what you understand we know God to be right now That's, we have the music Let's bow our heads and just concentrate in God's presence right now some of you might have an impression of somebody, somebody you knew, somebody you know. Maybe God is bringing upon you a particular person's name or situation. It's God speaking to you to pray for that particular person. Maybe you have a great decision that you have to make over either today or the next few weeks concerning your finances, concerning your life, even concerning your lifestyle your choices. Yes, in the past you have made poor choices, but God is always guiding you closer to Him. He's speaking to you right now. Hear His voice. Hear His heart. Do not let the enemy snatch this away from you right now. Put away any concerns about that appointment that you have this week about what you're going to do later about what, what you left at home right now it's your time he's dealing with your hearts he's dealing with your mind he's dealing with your spirit don't worry about what others are doing right now because their experience is unique with the Lord your experience is unique with him that's why he's called the personal savior. That's why it's called a personal relationship. The revelation that God gives to you right now is for you and you alone. The prophecy that he's giving through you is for you to speak out for somebody else. The visions that he's showing you right now is to guide you. Standing in the gap for somebody who needs that prayer. The Lord has impressed upon me earlier today, and now it's reminding me again. There's somebody here. I think you have a 